the Dales cover about a third of Derbyshire, between Hathersidge in the north and Sudbury in the south. Tourists come here to enjoy the countryside or to visit its outstanding country houses. Yet some would say the true heart of the Dales is to be found off the tourist trail and in the meadows of its farmers. And that is why one young couple decided to make the break, come here and have a farm of their own. Now, what might they have on that farm? Sheep? Cattle? Pigs? It didn't quite work out like that. At first glance, the farm of Nathan and Charlotte Anderson Dixon looks like any other. But look again. Nathan, I don't expect to come to a Derbyshire farm and see a camel. No. <laughs> what kind of farm is this? Well, it's, it's been described as a funny farm, but uh, my wife and I, when we decided to, uh, to set up a farm, because we're not farmers, we decided to set up a company to supply animals for films and for television, instead of what you'd class as traditional farming, really. What sort of jobs do these animals do? The jobs can vary, really, from marketing, advertising, r small productions, music videos. The camels at Christmas time, they do a Three Kings display, where we'll take Three Kings for a town centre event or an opening of a store. What is it like to keep a camel? It's very similar to keeping horses, really. A lot of the same temperament. They're quite inquisitive animals but you do need a dangerous wild animal licence to keep one. Are they dangerous? Not particularly, unless you upset them. They can spit, they can kick. I, I have been spat at by a camel. It's a very unpleasant experience, isn't it? Yeah, well, you must have upset the camel uh, in some way. Or... Well, it certainly upset me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the camels are just a small part of this unusual menagerie. What have you got in here, Nathan? Right, we've got some reindeer in here. We've got uh, six reindeer. Some originate from Sweden, some from Germany. And these are the real stars. Every Christmas time, they go around the country pulling sleighs. I was expecting to see antlers, but yeah. there aren't any. What happens is the antlers drop off at the beginning of the year, and then it takes about three to five months for the antlers to grow back again. But at the minute, they're growing about uh, an inch a week, really, on the ones that have started to grow. Isn't there one thing missing? One with a red nose. Yeah. Well, we call Rudolph. I don't get Rudolph, I just get these trainee ones. <laughs> very nice, sir. Very nice. There are other differences between these animals and those normally seen grazing on the Derbyshire Downs. When you walk through your fields, the animals come towards you, whereas you go through most fields and the yeah. animals walk away from you. Yeah, it's because they're so used to human contact. A lot of the animals that we have here as well have, have been hand-reared, and so, you know, they're interacting with us all the time, so they always come over. Have the rabbits been breeding ra rabbits? Uh, yeah, they have, yeah. <laughs> We've got uh, all the babies here. Uh, these are the two mothers. They've actually been in together, uh, which is a bit unusual, but they get on really well. All very pretty, but as part of your project, what's the point of them? Well, actually, this particular rabbit here has done a uh, photo shoot for Harrods magazine recently for an advertisement. This is a very upmarket rabbit. This, this is, yeah, a very posh one. Yeah. This is all quite a bit of a career change for you, isn't it? Yes, completely. I used to own a small chain of estate agents, and I ran that business for five or six years, and in 2008, I just felt like I needed a change. And what would you rather face in the morning, a camel or a house buyer? Um, house buyers are fine, it's house sellers that you have to deal with. <laughs> but uh, I'd rather face a camel at the moment, anyway. The landscape of the Derbyshire Dales lends itself to grazing animals, bred for their wool, meat and milk. So, surrounded by farmers breeding livestock for market, Nathan is certainly an oddity. Would you have wanted to be a conventional farmer? Uh, it, it wouldn't really suit me, to be honest with you. Um, I, I wouldn't be able to um, rear an animal on, um, get it to the stage where it could be sold either at market or sold for slaughter. Uh, I'd prefer to work with animals and train them. Really what we do is we supply animals for character, not for produce. We've got a rule in our house that if you give an animal a name, then you can't eat it. So <laughs> my wife makes sure that they've all got names. I think you'd be a very privileged animal to live here. It is a bit like living on a safari park with all the different animals. It's brilliant to be outside. It's just really peaceful. Nathan would like a monkey, um, but I've sort of tried to put my foot down. Whether that will change or not, I don't know, but at the minute, we, we're not having a monkey. <laughs> OK, snake. Yeah. Uh, what kind of snake? This is a uh, boa constrictor, and uh, she's about four years old. Her name's Georgia. You don't seem terribly bothered about holding a boa constrictor. No, no. She's, we've handled her a lot. I mean, she's been handled 
uh, since she was young. So, we're, you know, we're confident we know um, that she's uh, quite safe and everything. But she must so. have got all her natural instincts to want to constrict you. <laughs> Not really. I mean, we, we feed her regularly anyway, so we don't have to worry about her constricting anything. Uh, and what sort of work will she do? Uh, she's done typically uh, photo shoots, so um, photo shoots for a handbag range recently. It's tactless to take a live snake to a handbag shoot, isn't it? It is really, yeah, but it wasn't snake skin anyway, so we're all right. <laughs> well, that's all right then. Derbyshire is your home? Yes. But why come here? Why come to the Derbyshire Dales to farm? I think Derbyshire Dales is just a great place to sort of live and, uh, and to work and also because of what we do it's fairly central really but also it's a good place for small families as well. And the business apart it's a, yeah. just a beautiful place to live because yeah. there is something about the Derbyshire Dales landscape that is a bit different to other farming landscapes. Yeah, isn't it? yeah. it's not really classed as an arable area you've got lots of small herds and small flocks uh, smaller independent farmers and that really tells on the landscape as well really. I get the feeling of a very traditional farming place. Yeah, yeah definitely. So all these small scale traditional farmers around here yeah. who are sheep and cattle men yeah what do they think when they see a bloke with camels the first thing that they ask me is why have you got camels um, they just can't believe it but you know they're warming to it very well anyway how many different animals have you got on this farm? I'd say we've probably got about 35 different animal types just various different things really so a nice sort of cross-section nice range do you know I don't think this is a farm at all no. I think this is a sort of Noah's Ark. Yeah, I think so, yeah. <laughs> or perhaps a Nathan's Ark. Well, yeah, Nathan's Ark. Don't be surprised <laughs> if you see a boat in the garden next year. <laughs>